Michael Swickard here. Welcome to Enchanting People of New Mexico, sponsored by the Fresh Chili Company in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Our award-winning Hatch Green and Red Chili, it's from locally owned farms in Hatch, New Mexico, the chili capital of the world. Hit subscribe to automatically get these podcasts. Now, every Monday and Friday, we have regular historical and cultural podcasts. Wednesdays, like today, we celebrate people who are important to our area. And we normally talk about one person, though we've talked about more. But I want to celebrate Dr. Roger B. Corbett, who in 1955 became the 15th president of New Mexico State University, though when he was selected, it was known as New Mexico College of Agriculture and Mechanical Arts. He served 15 years, the longest of any president, and if you're on the campus of New Mexico State University, there is a Corbett Student Center. Not that it matters much, but I did talk to Dr. Corbett several times when I attended NMSU while he was still the president. One more thing, I have to speak softly about this. At the time, I didn't like him. I felt he was condescending. I thought he was very, very authoritarian. And so we didn't agree on the legitimate role of a university in a free society. However, and I do mean however, I have changed my view of Dr. Roger B. Corbett and think he was one of the three best presidents NMSU ever had. More so, the more I look at his legacy of achievement, I become more and more impressed by his leadership. In the late 1960s, he was not on my favorites list, and though he died in 1984, At the time of his death, since I graduated in 1972, I had already dramatically changed my opinion of him. A couple weeks ago, I did one of the retrospectives about Dr. Gerald Thomas, who followed Corbett as president of the institution. I liked Dr. Dr. Thomas as soon as I met him, and throughout his long life, we drank coffee and talked often. Well, he said this about Dr. Corbett. He said he served in MSU 15 years, the longest of any president during his tenure. This is really important. The university made giant strides in terms of the physical plant and the move toward much stronger academic areas through the development of graduate degrees. Amen. That is really true. So what I want to focus on is what NMSU is today in 2023 It is tied directly to the leadership Dr. Corbett and afterwards Dr. Thomas provided. But first, let me tell you a little bit about Dr. Corbett. He was born in Morgantown, West Virginia, received his graduate degree from Cornell University in Ithaca, New York. His field of study involved agriculture and agricultural economics. He graduated with his Ph.D. in 1925. In the next 30 years before becoming president of what is now NMSU, he was at Rhode Island State College, the College of Agriculture at the University of Connecticut, and the College of Agriculture at the University of Maryland. He was also a senior economist for the United States Department of Agriculture and worked with the American Farm Bureau Federation along with being the executive secretary of the New England Research Council. He understood much about how colleges dealt with agriculture and economics. Those 30 years before coming to Las Cruces steeped Dr. Corbett in agriculture, economics, and the ins and outs of land-grant institutions. So when the job opening came and he applied, I understand the regents didn't wait They, in effect, hired him in January 1955 and let him start on August 15, 1955. He was charged with moving the college from a college to a university. That's a big step. And while there were 2,000 students when he came on board, he was charged with increasing the student population to what seemed unlikely at the time when they talked about it, to 5,000 students which he did before he left in 1970. He was charged with increasing the academics and research to support all the roles that a land-grant university must achieve, a land-grant university. 
He was even at NMSU on the 100th anniversary of the Morrill Act in 1862-1962 that set up the land-grant system and was a constant firm hand to professional agriculture. Changing from the New Mexico College of Agriculture and Mechanical Arts to a full-fledged university took five hard years of work because part of it was creating the doctorate degrees and increasing the research ability of the institution to a university standard. It, it wasn't easy. Over the first few years, Dr. Corbett had to convince the leaders in Santa Fe and the Board of Regents to this change to university then college. Again, not easy. Dr. Simon Kropp wrote a book that all may learn. It was published in 1972, which details the start of the college in the 1880s to the year 1970, which I would recommend if you're interested in what makes NMSU the institution that it has become. First step was to recognize the institution into colleges such as the College of Engineering. Instead of the whole college, it was the College of Engineering, the College of Education, College of Agriculture, and to get doctorate programs going. Part of becoming a university was get the quality professors hired and get the research grants and research projects going. This he did. Another of Dr. Corbett's priorities was to improve the intercollegiate athletic programs and especially to improve the athletic facilities. The football and basketball programs at that time were not competitive. Over several years, and with the changes of coaches, he did, NMSU did become much better. The football stadium was enhanced to hold many more fans, and in the late 1960s, the Pan American Center, a 13,000-seat basketball arena, was built along with hiring Lou Henson, who took the NMSU Aggies to the Final Four one year. Having the Pan American Center was also a magnet for being able to have major concerts in our area, which we did. Likewise, hiring Warren Woodson as the head football coach was controversial at that time because he was paid much more than previous coaches, but he had real success. Around 1960, the Aggie football team was good and won twice in the postseason, Woodson was the football coach in the modern era that had the most success, including those postseason bowl game wins. In Corbett's 15 years of progress, he was able to improve many areas, such as in the computing area, the residence hall, so that students who increasingly came to college had enough dorm rooms, and especially all the connecting technologies that run underground throughout the university and then also the branch campuses and research connections for farmers and ranchers. Corbett had a strong vision of what the preeminent agricultural university in New Mexico should be, and he, he definitely got that going. Also, a campus radio station, KRWG FM, was started in some barracks alongside the journalism and mass communication department that was started. They were both started in 1964. The World War II barracks were beside Kent Hall and were torn down after the radio station and the department moved to Milton Hall. Now they did that after the Corbett Student Center was built. It was all part of a master plan. When the Student Center moved to, from Milton Hall, then Milton Hall was released to become something else, which was the FM radio station and also the television, television facility, KRWG-TV, in 1972. NMSU had a strong outreach for foreign students who came and brought their connection to other countries and cultures. Also available were internships in engineering and agriculture for NMSU students who could study for six months and then work in the field for six months. The on-the-job training this provided put a premium on NMSU students since employers had already seen their work and their work habits within their organization. There was also a strong push for Reserve Officer Training Corps, both Army and Air Force, which is a focus of land-grant universities. At the time, it was a requirement male students who had not been in the military participate with ROTC for the first two years there at the university. Then they could even either move to the professional officer corps or just not continue. I was in Air Force ROTC my first two years, and I have to tell you, I enjoyed the experience. Also, I should mention the university airport 
which was closed in the 1970s to build the current football stadium. Well, that airport was where many students learned to fly. It was my first experience of flying. It was also used by the Civil Air Patrol. My uncle, Major Eugene McKim, was commander of the local squadron, and I lived with him going to NMSU. I loved flying out of that airport. It was a great part of the university. Under Dr. Corbett's watchful eyes, there was many expansions of programs and new buildings, such as Guthrie Hall, the business building, the education building, O'Donnell Hall, and many more. The old Hadley building, those people old enough can remember, was torn down because it was about to fall down, and the new Hadley Hall was built right where it is right now. There was a big push for the physical science laboratory, and lots and lots of other buildings were shepherded into the campus under Corbett's watchful eye. So much more research was done under his guidance in many areas, including plants and animals, space travel, physics, chemistry, psychology. I know I'm missing many of the quiet things Dr. Corbett was able to accomplish over the years, and I want to apologize in advance. Again, in just 15 minutes, I can touch on the overall wonder of his leadership, but it would take hours to speak to all of those things he accomplished. And I know I've left several important ones out. I say I'm sorry for that. Now, the last couple of years of his leadership were difficult for him, who had be, had done so much for NMSU and to bring NMSU into the university realm because the students in the 1960s, how can I say this, were a mouthy bunch of rabble at times, and he did not take the challenge very kindly. Know this, I was always respectful, but we did not agree on several issues, including the completely free press. In 1968, my first year at NMSU, I was the head photographer of the yearbook, worked at the campus newspaper, and I was also a stringer for the Las Cruces Sun News, the daily newspaper in Las Cruces. So I interacted with Dr. Corbett and other administrators often. I enjoyed several of these administrators, such as Dr. Philip Ambrose, but several of them seemed to me to have been yelled at by the campus activists to the point of not being very happy with students. Again, I was respectful and was in many meetings taking pictures so that, for the most part, President Corbett knew my name and one time advised me to quit all of the time in the student government. You see, at the time I was a student senator. And he advised me to go get a professional job since I had the professional skills. Now, it was sort of a compliment, but I didn't receive it gladly. But you know something? He was right. In 1968, I thought President Corbett was over the hill, old, and should retire, which he did two years later. In retrospect, he stayed to finish several important projects. Again, I realized a bit too late how good President Corbett had been for the university community. All I can do now is to turn your attention to the very fine job Dr. Roger B. Corbett did and how much better we all are in our area because of his leadership. When I go into Corbett Center, the this, this student center on the campus of NMSU, I say a little prayer of thanks for all the improvements NMSU President Roger B. Corbett achieved. Oh, and partly personal, when Dr. Corbett came to our little slice of paradise, there were not any PhD programs at our institution of higher learning. Afterwards, I, Michael Swicker, did get a PhD from NMSU in 1998. So I give thanks for him starting the process that I finished. Let me speak of something from our sponsor, the Fresh Chili Company of Las Cruces, New Mexico. Soon, in the next month or so, there'll be 2023 Big Jim Hatch Green Chili available in a jar. It's a special reserve release of the Hatch Green Chili Veritol Big Jim 16-ounce jar. Veritol means that the product's only made with Big Jim. It's sweet and has a medium heat level. Big Jim is very popular with New Mexico restaurants and homes and me. The harvest of Big Jim crop is anticipated the middle of August, the first product available just a few weeks later. Customers can pre-order this project at the Fresh Chili Company website, freshchilico.com. Michael Swigert here. This is Enchanting People of New Mexico. Hit subscribe to automatically get these podcasts. Every Monday and Friday, we have regular historical and cultural podcasts 
Wednesdays. Today we celebrate someone important to our area. Thanks for your time today. We will always have lots of news and stories about New Mexico for you on these podcasts. Now, if you have something you would like me to talk about or someone you'd like me to talk about in a future podcast, write to michael at freshchilico.com, michael at freshchilico.com. So uh, have a good rest of your day, and yes, eat lots of that good Hatch Valley chili. Like I always say, some chili's good, more is better. Bye for now.